is finishing setting up. Um, I just want to make a couple of announcements. If it's for the first time that you are in the Mozilla Dev Room today, uh, we do have our code of conduct that I invite you to read, and it's over here, like bit.ly slash mosdem coc. It's different from the first demo one, so that's why I encourage you to look it up. If you are a developer, we have a survey going on at this link, bit.ly slash fosdem17, all in upper cases. And um, if you weren't earlier at the presentation, uh, we, I want to repeat that we do want to, to try the latest version of Firefox, the nightly one that gets all the code in from the developers in real time, not after it's polished and looks good. You can reach, uh, we can find the build at uh, nightly.mozilla.org and install it from there. And if you, well, you are already contributing to open source if you are here. If you like us to tell us why you contribute and why this is important for you, there's another survey, voila, uh, at uh, bit.ly slash why open source. Our next speaker is Eugenio from Italy. I hope I said that right afterwards. If not, you know, there are a lot of uh, uh, Italians around here, so be careful what you say. The one thing I know about them is like they really hate Hawaiian pizza. It's like they have an allergy of that. Like, who can eat? Uh, pineapple on the pizza. I'm like, I don't know, you know, people have, oh, exactly, people have different tastes, but like, no. Never invite them outside Italy to go to an Italian restaurant because, again, you got the point, exactly. He's an open source um, a volunteering contributor for a long time, and I heard he has even tattoos about it. Again, I'm not going to ask where because we have a code of conduct. Ladies and gentlemen, I was in here. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Hi, guys. Uh, despite Daniele, uh, I'm a Hawaiian pizza lover, so yeah, this is a uh, short pineapple? Uh, pineapple pizza, yeah, I love it. Sorry. But sorry. okay. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, Daniele is a hater. You got right. So, <laughs> I'm here to presenting uh, uh, A-Frame. Uh, this is an introduction to the framework for building web VR. And what is virtual reality? Um, virtual reality um, serves to uh, create experience and Im immersive experience where you can go inside using some tools, uh, different tools. But um, web mm, virtual reality is different because it's set up on the web and it's very difficult uh, to handle. It was very difficult, sorry. Because uh, um, I take this, uh, this quote uh, as, my, uh, as the starting of my talk because I think uh, the situation Mm, where a frame was created was like this, uh, that it's hard to create uh, the same quality virtual reality experience uh, online uh, in, on the web and um, because mostly because uh, the, 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 the low value proposition of the web is uh, to be low frictional, to have low friction. You click on a link, you get an output and you don't want to uh, download uh, other um, software to do it, so you just navigate into your browser and use uh, the tools you already have. Um, and it's very difficult to do it with uh, virtual reality because uh, a lot of stuff are involved uh, in order to uh, give you the experience. So uh, there are different devices and different categories of devices. So we got a uh, cardboard that are the simplest one. Uh, uh, you can build it your own <laughs> and print uh, um, a schematic and build it in uh, your house. Uh, you get a headset so you can use your uh, cell phone in order to um, try virtual reality. And they are just uh, a box. Um, they are just boxes with uh, uh, made plast by plastic. <laughs> and uh, you can put uh, your cell phone inside. And uh, we got uh, also the HME MD. These are um, uh, head-mounted devices like uh, Oculus Rift or uh, HTC Vive. So uh, different categories. Uh, to the developer side means that you have uh, uh, handled different kind of uh, SDKs or uh, integration into your um, app. And it's very difficult to do uh, because the variety of uh, the devices is mm, 10,000 uh, devices out there, mm, kind of different uh, handling of uh, input and output uh, sorts. So um, it's very hard. 
Uh, it's very, it's a mess. <laughs> but uh, Ephraim works on multiple devices, uh, so you can use it as well on uh, HTC, uh, Vive, or uh, with Oculus Rift, uh, on desktop, on mobile platform, uh, also as a flat experience without uh, being uh, a virtual reality um, like um, using visors or stuff like that. You can just browse with your browser inside the scene um, uh, like you do usually on Facebook when you uh, try to explore a 360 degrees photo or video. Um, and I think it's already set it up to do this uh, from scratch. You don't have to integrate anything. Uh, what you need uh, is just a browser with uh, WebGL support. And now mostly a browser has got a WebGL support. Uh, also on mobile, um, especially on mobile, uh, just Opera Mini doesn't have it, but it's crazy because uh, it's an old browser now. It's not very used. And we got a lot of polyfills in order to make uh, some stuff works uh, well on every platform. So, um, plus, uh, this framework works combined with uh, a lot of other JavaScript frameworks, very famous like Vue.js or uh, D3.js uh, and React, Angular, Red Hat, and also the old uh, jQuery for uh, the uh, the cutting edge lover, technology lover, um, it works also combined with jQuery because we are talking just about uh, manipulating the DOM, manipulating some object uh, um, uh, in HTML. It's a declarative HTML system and it's made by entity uh, component. Uh, it's sort of um, a collection of tools that you can use uh, to build this web reality. Um, and they got uh, blocks for models, uh, geometry, animations, and other stuff that combined uh, could bring you to create um, an A scene like that. This is the, the, the starting point of every virtual reality project made by iframe. And uh, I'm trying to explain you because uh, the, dark, uh, the dark background doesn't help us. But OK, this is an A scene. It's a tag, and it's a. Uh, uh, the tag that open the scene that render a canvas in HTML, so it's very basic. Uh, and inside the A scene the tag, you can print uh, uh, also some primitives uh, that are entities, primitive entities uh, that you can use to render maybe a sphere that is obviously a sphere uh, or a cylinder or plane, uh, and we got a more and more. But the most important stuff is that you declare everything by HTML uh, data tag here. So you get, you say to, uh, to the component uh, where, where to position it into the scene, uh, the size and also the, the other stuff like maybe a particular one of the uh, I don't know, the, the, the sphere got the radius or other stuff got the uh, height and, uh, and depth. So, and you can also attach it uh, uh, colors, uh, textures, patterns, and other stuff. You can also render a video on, um, as a texture of a primitive element. So, uh, it's very easy uh, to use if you render just uh, um, HTML and JavaScript technology, um, you are able to do um, a complete uh, virtual reality game. And as uh, Flaky already mentioned before me, JavaScript is fun. Uh, so you can use it to build video games maybe inside this um, framework. Uh, obviously, the 360s photo, the 360 degrees photos are very easy to, to do with uh, Ephraim because you just uh, declare uh, an sky tag. An sky tag is uh, just a tag uh, who wrap the entire uh, environment uh, into the uh, e-scene. So it's the, literally the sky of the scene. But uh, if you embed a photo, uh, especially an equirectangular photo that has a proportion of two uh, and one, 
uh, like I did here. I don't know if you can read it. <laughs> I take a photo from a Flickr photo group. Uh, you can find it easily. There are plenty of photographs now that go um, uh, downtown and take pictures of uh, these beautiful squares. <laughs> so you can use it uh, uh, for just testing purpose. Um, put into the sky tag and just a search uh, attribute and it will render uh, your environment in 360. Same stuff for the video and the video sphere tag. Um, I like to imagine me taking video like uh, the guy here. I do everything, do it uh, in the, my office, but okay. Um, and a video tag is a video is a tag that you um, put on a, a plane, uh, on a surface, and you can render a video on this surface like it is a, um, a texture. And the video sphere entity is an entity that you use in order to make uh, the video as the environment of uh, all your projects. So uh, you can navigate through the video, like uh, I, I saw um, a demonstration by, uh, made by uh, Discovery Channel that they do uh, amazing um, documentary and you can live uh, the experience of the sky, downhill sky, sky and so you can go, um, you can try skydiving maybe doing this stuff. So, what, mm, what uh, is an entity? An entity uh, obviously is an empty placeholder that we can fill with uh, behaviors and we can fill with uh, mm, functionality and appearance stuff. Um, we do it uh, in JavaScript and it's uh, very easy. If you know what WebBR was before a frame, you know that it's a very huge improvement uh, in doing web VR because you have to use uh, 3GS and other stuff to render the environment and it was very hard to do. Uh, this is uh, quite similar to 3GS declaration type but it's very easy because you just call your scheme, uh, the scheme are just the properties that you can pass through the entity uh, through HTML and then you can create everything with JavaScript in there. So you can take it, declare it, and rebring it into your environment, just declaring an entity, an a uh, an entity, and call it uh, as you want. So uh, this is the basic, because you can compose it. It's uh, different from um, an object, because it's not an object. If you were, um, try to think that in two dimensions, like uh, Flacky shows uh, before, uh, you can use an object to map everything because you can reuse the same property of the object. But in 3D uh, spaces, you need something that you can combine. So uh, if you get an entity, you can put an entity inside another entity and combine the behavior of one entity with, uh, I don't know, maybe the geometry of the other one entity and make uh, an enti uh, a better entity and, and a bigger entity that makes more stuff. Uh, okay, we got a A-frame registry uh, at all. <laughs> we are waiting for it. Uh, A-frame registry is a component ecosystem where you can download uh, um, Entity created by other people, uh, but also libraries and stuff that could be useful uh, for your project. And uh, this is cool because you can in just download it uh, and put it into your, your project, but uh, uh, there is another cool stuff that uh, uh, Fframe uh, released in the fourth version, beta version, and this is the inspector. Uh, this is the coolest stuff I've ever seen in a library, in JS library, because um, with this you can uh, inspect the scene. Uh, it's included in uh, in a frame, so just you just include your uh, library and click uh, CTRL Alt uh, plus I on uh, Linux and Windows. I don't I can't remember in Macintosh, but I think it's quite the same and. Um, you go into the inspector, and the inspector is cool because you can also live editing the stuff. I'm trying to put live code here to show the inspector. Okay, 
Uh, oh. Okay, I'll try to go into inspect mode. Okay, and I'm here. Uh, close it. This is the inspector. I can inspect the scene <laughs> directly. Uh, I can also inspect the element of the scene. Uh, I can change behavior and the, the geometry. I'm sorry, but the screen is very small. Uh, try to. Oh God. <laughs> okay, don't worry. We can go back to the scene, okay. And this is, this is what I created with the photo I told you before. This is Brussels, and I put just uh, these three objects inside, so we can manipulate it with the, the inspector. I try to do it. Uh, maybe I reload. <laughs> You can change everything by clicking. Oh, come on. <laughs> uh, it's too small. Uh, it was a cool feature, but uh, we can't see it. OK, so I explain uh, other stuff. Like, uh, if you change the behavior of this uh, element, OK, I change the position. Uh, I can see it uh, in this little space uh, where the um, component is now and um, I can also uh, add new elements uh, it's it's quite easy and it makes me choose okay I take the entity it makes me choose for the, a list of a component a camera canvas uh, uh, cursors uh, also the bug and uh, a cone or, or light you can render light inside the scene and uh, after I put. Uh, I can change everything by uh, changing here, and I can. I also can save it, uh, export to my HTML, so I can use it as a um, a three D modulation software in virtual reality, less than Blender, but uh, something like this. Uh, or you can uh, also use object that you rendered by Blender. You made in Blender. You can embed it as an object inside your scene, and then. Uh, with the inspector, you can easily uh, manipulate it and save it. So uh, this is a very, very big, uh, um, very, very big improvement. I like to see the okay the, the website. Uh, this is the central website where you can find everything you need about uh, a frame and uh, also the demos. Um, some demos. Need require uh, obviously headset or uh, uh, HTC Vive in this case. But if you want to try it, uh, especially at A Blast, that it's very new. <laughs> and I, I'm addicted to to um, uh, to first person shooter, so this could be funny. And um, this is, uh, you can try it tomorrow uh, in the Mozilla booth. Uh, we are in the um, second floor and you can find us with the HTC Vive so you can try it. Uh, ask, um, maybe there, there is a little bit of queue, but uh, uh, try to find uh, Flaky or me or other people there so uh, we'll be let your time more sweet. And, um, and then, Bring me back to my <laughs> okay presentation. So, how can you start developing with this? You can start uh, in very too easy manner. One is by installing the boilerplate. Uh, why do you need a boilerplate? You need a boilerplate because uh, it runs uh, an old server on localhost and uh, it avoids you sometimes. Uh, stuff that are a little bit uh, uh, frustrating, like uh, uh, cross-domain uh, issues. And if you run a localhost server that is completely set up 
if you download it uh, from uh, a frame boilerplate, a frame VR, a frame boilerplate. Um, and it's just uh, an index HTML with a basic example where you can start and inspect it and do it with uh, also with drag and drop if you want or by code if you are a coder or front end with front end technology if you are a designer. And uh, this is the most sharp way to learn how to do it. And there is a big uh, uh, getting started part on the website that's full of uh, example. Or you can start from CodePen. Uh, there is my CodePen uh, that I shared before. I tried to manipulate before. And uh, CodePen is, uh, or Timbo, um, are perfect because you just, it requires just uh, uh, the inclusion of a JavaScript file and then you can also see it live. They support it, I have tried. Um, or get in touch with the, some one of the community uh, on FMVR Slack uh, Heroku app. Uh, or you can read a lot of stuff on the FM blog that it's very active. I found a lot of uh, libraries there, especially the particular rendering library that allows me to render uh, starts in a project. Uh, it was included also in the FM registry after, uh, but I discovered it uh, by reading the blog, so it's very helpful. And uh, Stack Overflow, obviously, because uh, uh, if you need something, there is Stack Overflow. And also the Twitter account. Um, if you are interested in uh, VR technology, I invite you to uh, follow this Twitter account that is the um, official one because uh, they release a lot of uh, a lot of uh, news okay uh, my time uh, is run out so uh, thank you <laughs> and um, I hope you to see you tomorrow at the Mozilla booth uh, uh, second floor thank you. if you have a question we have time for one or two questions raise your hand Yes, please. Uh, can I please ask you to repeat the question? There is one in the third one. Uh, yeah, sorry. I didn't see. How the objects are run, like adding shady effects or something? Okay. Uh, you, he asked me to, if it's possible to manipulate. Uh, no, no, don't worry. He doesn't need it, but okay. Um,